Thank you for watching the video. I want to reveal to you five of the many secrets of real estate investing. My name is Jim Glasgow, been a real estate investor for 38 years. I'm the author of the book, How I Made Millions in Real Estate and How You Can Too. And I hope this video stimulates you to think about becoming a real estate investor or improving on the investments that you have. Secret number one, seller financing. Now, it doesn't seem like seller financing is a secret, but it is. In real estate investing, so few people ask for seller financing when they're buying, and so few sellers offer seller financing. And there's good reasons that both of them should do so, or at least consider doing so, especially with the low interest rates that people are getting on savings these days. Why not finance the buyer of the house? I'm assuming you don't need the money and get a higher rate of return. And then if you're the buyer, how many houses could you buy as rental houses if you didn't have to fill all the credit applications be limited by the bank rules? So consider seller financing. Secret number two, ask for a discount when paying off a note. I know, it's kind of intuitive. We ask for discounts all the time. If you're a senior, you ask for a senior discount. You ask for a discount for AAA or whatever it is that you can get a discount for. But we seldom ask for a discount when we're paying somebody off. I can tell you that over the years, I've saved thousands of dollars by asking for a discount. So if I have a seller finance note or a house that I purchased on seller financing, and I'm going to refinance it for whatever reasons I'm going to uh, redo the loan. I always ask the lender and usually in writing, though I guess today we could consider an email writing that would they discount the note if I paid it off early or paid it off in the next 30 days. And then when they come back, well, what are you thinking about? I always ask for a thousand dollars. I know it's not much. If it's a hundred thousand dollar note, it's only 1% but it does add up. And sometimes they'll make the offer to discount and give you even more. Secret number three, rent house rule of thumb. So you're looking at a house, you're considering buying it for a rent house. How much rent do you need to charge to justify what you have to pay for the house? So somewhere between 0.01% and 0.1.33% of the cost of the house should equal the monthly rent. So a $100,000 house, needs to rent for at least a thousand a month, that'd be 12,000 a year. And in some cases where you have higher tax and insurance as much as uh, 1.33 or one and a third percent of the price of the house. So a hundred thousand dollar house would need to rent for $1,330 a month. It's a quick rule of thumb to determine, should I even look at this house? If the rent in that zip code, you can just Google that zip code. If the average rent is 1350, then you know that you can afford to look at houses in the $100,000, $110,000 price range. Again, depending on how much down payment. If you have a large down payment, then you could up that amount. The sweet spot for rentals is houses that sell for between $100,000 and $180,000. Now, I know in a state like California, you're going to have to adjust these for the value of homes out there or any other expensive uh, location. Secret number four, and this is a big one. What house do I buy for a rent house? I know, we talked about that a little bit in secret number three, but this is even more important. So here's the question, answer to the question, what house do I buy for rent house? Any house that after you pay the mortgage payment and the taxes broken down by the month and the insurance broken down by the month and allowance of 8% to 10% for vacancy, if you have $200 free cash flow left per month, that's the house that you buy for rent house. So why is that? Because if you have a $200 per month or $2,400 per year, then you have a positive cash flow that will cover vacancy, repairs, maintenance, someone tearing up the house, and you can stay in business. And if you don't, then a two-month vacancy wipes you out for the year on the profit that you're making. So this is a the rule of thumb that I live by in my rental house business. Secret number five, private lenders are better than banks. I've been a real estate investor for a lot of years. All of my properties are financed by private individuals, not banks. I used to do banks, but because of due on sale clauses and loan limits and cross collateralization and credit checks and various other terms that banks put in there to protect their uh, depositors as they should, they get in the way of me uh, having the flexibility to run my business. Yes, I pay a higher interest rate. 
So I'm, my average interest rate is 8% on all of my loans. But again, remember the rule number four, $200 positive cash flow. I don't care what the interest rate is. I ain't paying it anyway. The landlords, the, uh, I'm sorry, the tenants are. So look into private lenders. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. So I hope I've given you some ideas that you hadn't thought about it is about real estate investing. Maybe we encourage you to become a real estate investor and get wealthy that way, or maybe to improve your rental business that you currently have. Uh, I've been doing this for 38 years, take advantage of all those years of experience. I've broken the courses down. There's altogether some 21 of them. Here's uh, about, I don't know, 16, 17, 18. I'm right here. They're only $59 each. Uh, you can take only the courses that apply to what you need to know today, and you don't have to buy a big bag. So make yourself wealthy as a real estate investor. Visit my website and see if any of these courses would be right for you. And thank you for watching.